In this video, we are going to discuss decision trees, dealing with single criterion decisions with uncertainties. Let's take an example and then build a decision tree and later we will transpose this to an Excel application. Let's say you're planning on going on a holiday and you have the following options. Go on an Alaska cruise, on a road trip to European cities or stay at home. Let's draw a DT to represent these scenarios. We always start with a decision node. This is our objective and we have to make a decision. The decision node is always a square node. We use the color blue. You can use any color you like. I prefer you stay on with our recommendations so that we are consistent. And the first node is always D0. Now, if you have to make a decision, you must at least have two possible options or what we call paths. In this case, we have the cruise, the road trip or stay at home. Well, in the case of a cruise, let's say there's a likelihood of bad weather. The word likelihood is really causing probabilities to exist. So we have a probability node which we represent in circles. So here we say probability and we define it as P1 and the likelihood of good weather or bad weather. Again, something could happen. We have to have paths. Right. At the end, we have a terminal node. All trees must end with terminal nodes. Make sure that nothing is up in the air. For the road trip, we have the possibility of strikes or no strikes. And of course, we can stay at home. So you can see the entire tree has been completed with terminal nodes. Let's give some numbers. In the case of the Alaskan cruise, let's say there's a 40% probability of good weather, which would make us very happy. And rather than money, let's call it units of happiness. So we have five units of happiness. These are arbitrary numbers, but this is a good start. Let's say if the weather turns bad, we would be very unhappy and we would suffer. So let's call it minus three units of fun. In the case of the road trip, once again, let us say there's a 40% probability of a strike, which would frustrate us. Negative five units of fun. And of course, if there are no strikes, we would be happy. So we have six units of fun. Stay at home, we'll be bored and sad and we'll put that down as minus two units of fun. Let's put this on a diagram. Here we have, as you can see, we put these alongside the paths. 40% probability for plus five units of fun, 60% probability minus three units of fun for good weather, bad weather respectively. And the same way for strikes and no strikes. And stay at home, we have minus two units of fun. And you can see now the numbering, I just go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can use any kind of numbers. You can use P1, P2, and then T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, as you like, as long as they are unique and distinct. Okay, what did we learn? Decision node is where you have to make a decision and it's a square node. A probability node is where there is a probability that something could happen and you have no control. In the decision node, you have the control. Probability node, you have no control. There's a probability that it, something could happen. We use a circle. And the terminal node is where we have no further action. And always remember, a path must begin and end with a node. The next step is to calculate the terminal values, TV, for each terminal node. And for this, we go from left to right on our diagram and we ignore the existence of probabilities. And we go down every single path starting from D0 all the way to our terminal node. So we come along this and there could be numbers here, but in this case, we don't have any. And there's only a five. So we say TV is plus five. Come back along this. TV is minus 3, TV is plus 6, etc, etc, and here it's just a minus 2. So we have all the terminal values. 
Now we have to calculate the expected value. For that we go from right to left. Let's start here. At P1 we have two probable outcomes. So the expected value at node P1 is 0.4 times 5 plus 0.6 times minus 3. You can see a value of 0.2 so we put it here expected value 0.2. For the road trip we can do the same 0.6 times 6 plus 0.4 times minus 5 is plus 1.6 and, and finally for stay at home we have the simple minus. We now have our expected values and then you can see the diagram shows that the road trip has the highest expected value which is plus 1.6 which should be our decision. So in this case we need to go on the road trip. So what did we learned about terminal values that we must go from left to right without probabilities. We learned about calculating the expected value where we go from right to left with probabilities. And we must do this for each path from beginning to end. This is the end of this video and later we will show you how to build your decision tree using an Excel application.